Welcome to the Whole Food Plant-Based Cooking Show, where we make plant-based cooking easy. I'm Jill, and today we are making apple fritters that are oil-free, gluten-free, and refined sugar-free. Grab a plate, cause it's the all-free Whole Food Plant-Based Cooking Show. Hi everyone, I hope you're having a great day and welcome back to the show. So today we are making apple fritters, which is one of my favorite, favorite things. I absolutely love them. And it happens to be uh, one of the votes that our community members, our supporting community members, got to vote on this month. So this was the winning, uh, the winning recipe. So we are gonna make those for, for you all today. So apple fritters, normally they, it's a dough uh, filled with apples that is deep fried and then glazed with like a sugary glaze. So I'm gonna make you a healthy version of those so that you can still enjoy them. So we're gonna jump right in. We're gonna start with our glaze first because they need to soak while the fritters are in the oven. And if you want the complete recipe, it'll be in a link in the details below. So this is a fourth of a cup of cashews. And if you don't have cashews, you could also use almonds. Fourth of a cup of pitted dates. A third of a cup of water. A half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. And a teaspoon of lemon juice. That is gonna keep it from being too overly sweet. It'll brighten it up with just a little bit. Okay, so we're just gonna set that aside. Let that soak. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is we are going to create our flour. So I have one and a half cups of organic rolled oats here. And we're just gonna use, oops, whoops, I'm making a mess here. We're gonna use our Nutribullet today. Get some of that out of there. Because it's a pretty small amount, you don't need a big blender for this. And we're gonna grind this into flour. So we're just gonna grind it a pretty fine grind. Today's show is brought to you in part by Nutrilicious. Nutritional yeast is an essential ingredient found in every modern day plant-based kitchen that actually dates back to ancient Egyptian times. Nutrilicious nutritional yeast is a powerful superfood that is gluten-free, low in sodium, non-GMO, and 100% vegan. Nutrilicious is high in dietary fiber, pound for pound has more protein than beef, and is full of the cheesy flavor we crave. As a very special deal for our viewers, click the link in the card or in the description to save up to 55% off of your order. Okay, so the what we're going for here is not quite like white flour. You know how fine and silky that feels. This still has a little bit of a grainy texture to it, but the granules are very small. So we're gonna put that in our bowl here. And I have a teaspoon of baking powder, a half teaspoon of baking soda, a tablespoon of flax meal, and two and a half teaspoons of cinnamon because these are gonna be really, really cinnamony. Okay, we're just gonna whisk that together a little bit here. Make sure there's no clumps in there. Okay, that's good for that. Now on to the wet ingredients. Okay, so I'm gonna use that same container because that is okay. Got a cup of unsweetened soy milk. And like I always say, you can use whatever plant milk you choose, but uh, it's just always better to use the unsweetened version because we're gonna get our sweetness from dates. That's our whole food sweetener here. So there's half a cup of pitted dates and then one teaspoon of vanilla extract. And we're gonna blend this up in the same blender until those dates are completely pulverized. Okay, there we go. That is ready. All right, 
And the last ingredient that we have are the apples, the star of the batter. So I just cut up or diced up a Granny Smith apple. And this is pretty important. You want a really tart apple because this is kind of a sweet fritter. And if you use one of the sweet apples, it kind of gets lost in the flavor. So if you use a really tart apple, it kind of jumps out at you a little bit and you can taste the apple. So I'm gonna put this in my flour first. I like to put the apple into the flour first and then stir it a little bit so that the flour kind of coats the apples and that helps the apples. It keeps them from clumping together so you don't get all, you know, a, a big clump of apple in your fritter. Okay, there we go. You see they're just all lightly coated and that flour will stick to the wetness of the apple. Now we will add our batter. And this is such a quick and easy recipe. You'll just love it. It's really nice for, you know, a little afternoon snack with a cup of tea or coffee or after dinner if you want just something just a little bit sweet but not too heavy. Okay, so now we're just mixing this up and I have my oven set or preheat, preheated on 400 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm gonna mix that really well. You'd wanna make sure you don't have any of those dry clumps of flour or baking soda in there. There we go. And as you can see, it's kind of a wet dough, but as it sits, it gets thicker and thicker because the oats contain a lot of starch, that really good starch that's good for your gut biome, and that will start to thicken so that your fritters will hold a nice shape. Okay, so now I have my baking tray here and it's already lined with parchment paper. Or you could always use a baking tray that has either a piece of silpat on it or a lightly oiled. And now you're just gonna scoop this out onto the tray, just in lo loose globs here. And it doesn't really matter. If you remember the apple fritters, they're kind of lumpy and bumpy and misshapen because of all the apples in there. So it's not something that needs any kind of, any skill really. So this recipe makes about eight to 10 pretty decent size apple fritters. And that's completely up to you what size you want. This isn't anything that particular. Okay, six. So if you wanna be part of our membership community, you need to go on our website and check that out because that's what we do every month. I, I take all of my uh, recipes off of my idea wall and I let the, the supporting community vote on which recipe I work on next. So that's kind of fun. And then it lets me know, you know what you guys are all interested in and what types of recipes you enjoy. So now we're gonna stick this into our oven for 20 minutes. While we're waiting for that, I'd like to share with you some background on our show. The Whole Food Plant-Based Cooking Show is crowdfunded, which means these free weekly recipe videos, along with our entire catalog of recipes on our website, plantbasedcookingshow.com, and our new Plant-Based Cooking Made Easy Cookbook, are all made possible in part by the generous patronage of our supporting members. By becoming a supporting member, you gain access to great member perks, like monthly product giveaways, free downloads of our eBooks, and access to our in-depth courses, including our 28 Days Plant-Based Made Easy course, where we offer a step-by-step -step guide to making the switch to a fully plant-based diet. We create this show for the hundreds of thousands of viewers just like you who tune in each month from all over the world to make it easy for everyone to live a plant-based lifestyle. So if you love our content, please join us on our mission and become a supporting member today by following the link in the description. Okay, let's get back to the show. Okay guys, these are done 
and they've been out of the oven for a while. If you want to come in and take a look at the color of them, and they are thoroughly cooled now. You want them to be cooled before you frost them because this, this drizzle will just melt all over the place if you don't let them cool first. So this is what we had set aside, right? So it's been soaking that whole time, which should make it easier to blend. And this part you might have to just be a little patient with it because it's gonna, you want it to be really nice and silky and smooth. So it might take a few times, you know, scraping down the sides or whatever, but just be patient, it'll work. Okay, now this is nice and smooth. Oops, I need a spatula here. Just like scrape down those sides so that it will pour out of here. All right, so now if you want to be super, super neat, you know, you can put it in a little piping bag and drizzle it over there, but I'm not that fancy. So I'm just gonna just kind of drizzle it over lightly. Okay, so I'm gonna finish these up and I'll meet you at the table for a taste. Okay guys, the favorite part, the tasting part. So I'm gonna grab one of the first ones I frosted. Not very pretty though. The other ones are a lot prettier, but I'll eat the ugly one, it's okay. Mm. They're really soft and spongy. Mm. Oh, first you get a hit of the icing which is a little bit tangy from the lemon juice. And then you get the sweetness of the cake and the batter part. And then those apples. The key is those Granny Smith apples. You gotta have that little bit of tanginess from those Granny Smiths. Mm. Mm. So good, and guess what? You're not gonna sugar crash. Yay! So be sure to give this a like, guys, and I'll see you next week for another great recipe.